Okay, now uh, I have finished normalizing the blade. Uh, I normalized, nailed, and then three normalizing cycles. I didn't show all of them in the video because the colors weren't showing up very well. Um, then after I let it cool off, I went ahead and I, I cleaned up the scale, cleaned the scale off with a 120 grit belt, uh, which is the finish that was on there. And that's so that when we put the clay on there, the clay will stick better. If you put it on the scale, it's just gonna come right off. So get the scale off, and also don't forget the spine, because uh, it'll come off there as well. And so now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to draw where I want to put the clay on with a Sharpie marker, uh, and that just sort of gives me something to go off of, and then I'll put the clay on. For clay, we're going to use satinite refractory mortar, which is the same stuff that the forge is put together with. And it's just, you just get the clay and you just mix it with water. The water goes a long way. It doesn't take very much at all. Um, a lot of clay for a little bit of water. So uh, go easy with the water or else you're just gonna have a big soupy mix. Sort of the consistency of toothpaste. I like to use these little ketchup kind of cups. Um, buy them in bulk. If you use them, try and get the ones that are have a wax lining. Um, I bought a whole bunch, and they don't have wax on them, and so when they get wet, they just sort of disintegrate. So. Clay is mixed. Um, as far as what kind of line I want, um, I've always sort of struggled with, you know, what's what's a good line. I know some people they do really elaborate ones. Um, I think I just maybe want to keep it all simple. So I'll do something like this. This is a simpler one. Um, and then if I want it to be a little more complex, I'll just do some little spikes in between. Like that. Um, but it does make applying the clay difficult. Well, not so much difficult, it's difficult to match on both sides. So I've put it on there like this, uh, a little thicker than I want. Um, and I'll spread close to the edges. use uh, your Q-tips and I'll use that to, uh, to push the clay on these little points.
there and that's it um but that was the easy part so now I have to put clay on the other side and match the pattern just making a big mess of clay here Probably have too much, but and what I'll do to match it is I'll put the point on my table here, and I'll look down, and I can see where it is and match it up. There, looks pretty close to me. Um, it is a tad thicker on this side. So, I don't know, maybe I'll try and thin it just a little. Now, I'm gonna put clay in the spine, because I want that to stay soft um, for when we do our file work. A lot of people, they do their file work before heat treat, then they have to clean the scale out of it. So if I'm gonna have a soft spine anyways, I prefer to just do it after the heat treat and not have to clean all that scale out of there.
There. Now, I know a lot of guys that they'll put their clay on and they'll let it dry for days and days and they'll put it in the oven to dry the clay out. And I used to try and do it that way and it still would pop off uh, in the forge. Uh, so then somebody told me, put it on and then put it straight in straight in and it's worked ever since so that's what we're gonna do so I'm just gonna put it in there really low heat and just let it come up to heat really slow I'm gonna put the knife in there nice and easy be careful not to hit the clay on the ends get it squished so I'll put it in and I'm just going to hold it there for a few seconds that, to let that clay harden. I'm going to gently set it down. Here's my quench pan. This is where I'm going to quickly bring it out and quench it. Um, it's Parks 50 engineered quenching oil. Um, a lot of people will go the, the homemade or the home recipe route with vegetable oil or peanut oil and uh, that works pretty well. Uh, I use a similar recipe for a while. Um, I think it's the blade hard enough uh, and especially works a lot better too for 1084 um, it's more forgiving steel um, but as soon as I switched to this stuff there was a noticeable difference it did get quite a bit harder and uh, it's just better um, I don't care what anybody tells you it's, it's better, it's expensive and it's worth it um, if you're only going to make a few knives I wouldn't get it um, you can only buy five gallons at a time, so it's pretty expensive to buy. Um, but if you plan on making knives as a hobby or professionally, uh, I would say definitely get it. Okay, so this is still coming up to temperature. It's not showing any color yet. Okay, so we're starting to show some color, so I'm going to monitor it quite a bit more closely. Um, when you're pulling it in and out to check it, you do want to be careful you don't scrape the clay on the side of the, the forge. Um, it's pretty sturdy, the clay is pretty sturdy on there, but it can scrape off.
still magnetic, but it was a weak pull, so that's telling me it's getting closer to non-magnetic. It does take quite a bit longer with the clay on there, it's a lot more mass to heat up. Uh, but that's okay, we're patient. Okay, we're past non-magnetic, so now we just want to get it past the deck of lessons and just get a nice, even, bright color.
Okay, I think we're almost ready. All right, so now we just want it to cool so it's cool enough to touch. And even that's not necessary. If you're, if you're really worried about it cracking, you can just throw it right in the tempering oven with all oil on it and everything. I usually like to clean it up first um, because this oil is synthetic and it will smoke a lot um, but I actually think for this time I'm just gonna throw it in there uh, and then I'll go take lunch and worry about it later